Robertson's. Is Dave Robertson speaking for... Hmm? Got the wrong script on the teleprompter. As you know, this is really the Huntley Brinkley Report. Bill Scott um, originally started announcing the show as a live action puppet. And uh, not only did he voice it, he was there with his hand up in the, in the puppet working it. I don't know. I don't think those cartoons capture the real me. Oh, I know I don't have the handsomest profile in the world. But you've got to admit, I've got more than anybody else. Oh well, it's time for our weekly excursion into Elfsville to put a new twist on an old tale. In a nice way, of course. And here it comes, a fractured fairy tale. I've been working very hard at Disney's and Warner Brothers and MGM. I had been doing animation for a long time and Jay had heard about me. And my agent called me one day and said, do you know a guy named Jay Ward? And I said, I've never heard of him in my life. I'd never even heard of Crusader Rabbit. I'd heard of Disney but, and Warner's, but that was about all. So Jay took me to lunch one day and over a double martini lunch, I was ready to, to accede to anything <laughs> and that's how uh, that's how he invited me onto the show. I didn't have to voice test or anything, and it was just a, a dream all the way down the line. Last time you... The Bullwinkle Show's history means progress. And if it wasn't for progress, where would we be today? On radio, that's where. So now, to take us back for a boob's eye view of history, Here's that canine quiz kid, that low-slung doggy with the high IQ, Mr. Peabody. Ford five shows in one night. By shows, I mean segments. Bullwinkle was about three and a half minutes. So we would do five of those. Jay would perhaps rent the studio for an hour and a half, which gave us a half an hour to laugh in the very beginning. Well, Joe, we never really realized that it would have the impact on society. Actually, uh, the, the, the uh, maturation of young people into adults. We never realized that it would be the cult that it is. Now they're, they're understanding the brilliance of the writing and the puns and the jokes that they didn't get before. And I think that's why the kids who are now grown up are really realizing what a, a, a fantastic satirical show that it was. Time again for Dudley Do-Right of the Mountie. The only red coat who never gets his man. Never gets the girl, either. You'll be happy to know that this part of the Bullwinkle Show has made the greatest mark on Canada since the chickenpox epidemic of 1903. People. The people knew that I had done Natasha, and they didn't realize that I did uh, Rocky and Natasha and Little Nell and all the fairy godmothers and and uh, all the witches, you know, with the warts on their nose, and all the little princesses, because they all had such a distinctive style that none of them sounded like Rocky or Natasha, and uh, I guess I was very fortunate in that respect in, in being so versatile, and I think that's why Jay Ward hired me. Well, well, the was... What other show has the host who sings, dances, recites poetry, and has antlers. On this network, anyway. But I suppose you're wondering why I called you all here this evening. Well, this is why. It's the Bullwinkle Show. Well, there's no turning back now. Over the river and through the woods to Grandmother's house it goes, with a great big basket of goodies and some boxes of Cheerios. Over the river and through the woods with each tasty golden O. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh. So it gets upset in the snow. General Mills was our, our first sponsor. And uh, they really 
They had no inhibitions about what we said or what we did. And they bought us almost sight unseen, and we're very grateful to them for that. And here, with his... Is it all fun? Toss new news agency felt that um, we were perpetuating the Cold War. And Rocky and Natasha were dubbed into Japanese and shown over in Tokyo. And the Russians naturally are closer to Japan than they are here. And they were monitoring it. And they said, Net, you can't do that. And so they really raised quite a, uh, a hullabaloo in Tokyo. And they were taken off for a while, but then they went back on. And, and uh, you know, I don't care whether it's Russia or the United States or what country it is. We've got to learn to laugh at ourselves. And that's what we did on the Bullwinkle Show.